I was in seminary, I was given an assignment to read a sermon. And I remember as I was reading through the sermon, I thought, well, this isn't a very good sermon. Why are they asking us to read this? And then the speaker in the sermon said, and I said to myself, Billy, and I looked up and I saw Graham written in the upper part of the, the handout that I had with the sermon on it. And I realized this was a sermon by Billy Graham. And all of a sudden, now I was reading it in Billy Graham's voice, hearing Billy Graham's voice in my head. And it made a world of difference. It became a much better sermon, I, I, I think. And, and I realized how much that voice, you know, I, I carried it with me. I could replicate that voice in my head as I was reading that sermon. We should be able to do that with the voice of Jesus. That's what we're going to talk about today, how Jesus' sheep hear his voice and how we are called to follow that voice because that voice leads us to abundant life. My name is Murray Richmond, and I'm the pastor of the First Presbyterian Church here in Medford. And it is my joy to be with you today in worship, however and wherever you're worshiping. And I just pray that this service would somehow draw you closer to the God who loves you so much. Let us join our hearts in a call to worship. We come to worship the risen Christ. Praise to Christ, the good shepherd. Alleluia, praise to Christ, the gate. Alleluia, praise to Christ, the lamb. Alleluia, praise to Christ, our savior. Christ is risen still, alleluia.
Our first reading today is the beloved 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The gospel lesson comes to us this morning from the Gospel of John. Hear the word of the Lord. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheep gate, sheepfold by the gate but climbs in another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief only comes to kill and destroy. I come that they might have life and have it abundantly. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, there are some voices that are so distinctive that as soon as you hear them, you know exactly who it is that's speaking. For example, when Johnny Cash opens his concerts by saying, Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. He really doesn't need to say his name. When you hear that gravelly baritone voice, you know exactly who it is. You hear a song by Frank Sinatra or by Bruce Springsteen, and you know exactly who's singing that song. You could be blindfolded and put into a movie, and if Jack Nicholson were in the movie, you would know immediately who that was, even though you couldn't see him, just from his voice. Many of you grew up listening to Walter Cronkite, and I'm sure you would recognize that voice if it came out over the air again. I'm a big fan of public radio, and over the years I've heard many distinctive voices of radio personalities. I I was in an airport once, and I heard this voice, and I thought, wait a second, I'm in an airport, but I'm hearing an NPR voice. And indeed, it was Michael Feldman who hosted the NPR show, What Do You Know? I'd never seen him before in my life. And I didn't recognize his face, but I knew that voice anywhere. When I lived in Alaska, I did commentaries for public radio. And a couple times I'd be out in public and be talking to someone, and somebody standing aside would go, Are you Murray Richmond? And I would go, Yeah, I listen to you on the radio. And then inevitably they would say, You look a lot younger than you sound. Well, okay, I'll take that. Apparently, cars have special voices. When my dogs are waiting for someone to come home, they can hear the specific Jeep as it drives down the road. Now, another Jeep Patriot could go by and they wouldn't give it a notice. But when our Jeep Patriot comes down the road, they're all at the gate waiting for me or Angelie to come into the house. Jesus said that his sheep know his voice. And that we will follow the shepherd's voice. Now he says that in the context of there are other voices out there. And he doesn't have very kind words to say for them. They are thieves and bandits. It is true that sheep know the voice of their shepherd. I was at a shepherd's field in Bethlehem and that we were, there were a couple different shepherds in the field. And when they saw us come in, they came over and What they wanted was uh, for us to pay them to take our picture with them and their sheep. 
And when they realized that we weren't going to do that, and all the sheep that they had had mingled together, and then the shepherds moved to their separate parts of the field, and as they called the sheep, they all separated out, and they followed their particular shepherd back to their particular corner of the field. The sheep hear Jesus' voice. This raises the question, though, do we hear the voice of Jesus? There are so many voices out there clamoring for our attention. We hear voices from TV, from social media, from friends, from advertisers, from actors and musicians, to celebrities, politicians, authors, you name it. There's a ton of voices out there telling us a lot of different things. So how do we hear the voice of Jesus? Well, the only sure way I know is to go back to the Gospels. And after a while... Once we read and hear the voice of Jesus within the Gospels, then it's a lot easier to hear it in other places. Once we hear our shepherd calling us, it becomes becomes easier and easier as we go through life to continue to hear Jesus. And for this particular message, what I want to do is just give some instances of what Jesus' voice sounds like what Jesus says, and how we can recognize his voice. Because some of the things we hear that may sound like Jesus aren't necessarily something Jesus would say or call us to do. We start with Jesus' first sermon. It's in Matthew, and it's the Sermon on the Mount. And he's made a little splash for himself. He's got some followers. And as Matthew tells it, this is his first big sermon, his first big message to the public. And people are gathered around him. He sits down, which is the normal pose for a teacher who would be teaching. And he says something extraordinary when he starts off. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. As Jesus was saying this, he just destroyed the religious expectations of the people who are following him. I mean, we like it or not, we like to think that religious people have it all together. And that the more religious you are, the closer to God you are, the more you have it together. And while that may be true, Jesus did not come just to call people together who already have everything they need in life. Jesus did not come just to call people who had it all together. Jesus starts by saying, blessed are the poor in spirit. God is with the poor in spirit in spirit those who struggle those who are having a hard time you know it's it he doesn't say blessed are those who are impeccably dressed every sunday morning and are on time for church all the time and who never have a hair out of place in their life whose lives are examples of perfect rectitude everything's okay everything's fine they're very close to god and they know it and you can see it in them no Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit. And that would be all of us if we're willing to claim that, if we're willing to say, this is who Jesus reaches out to. This is who Jesus calls. This is who Jesus blesses. Blessed are they who mourn. Blessed are those who are hurt. Not those who can rise above it all with a kind of stoicism that I can get through anything with God. Blessed are those who cry out to God, how long, how long? Blessed are those who shed tears of pain. Jesus is calling sheep that need a shepherd. Jesus is calling us not because we have it all together, not because we're perfectly groomed examples of model Christians. Jesus calls us to come to him because we don't have it all together because we need the help of God because we are poor in spirit we 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 do mourn we do hurt we're not the most powerful people on the earth 
We hunger and thirst for righteousness, even though we don't have it. We are merciful, and mercy is never quite the show of strength that people, you know, expect from high and mighty people. But that's, that's the voice of Jesus calling us and telling us that God is with these people. In another way, Jesus identifies with those who are hurting. In Matthew 25, he, it, it, this is a parable. He's gathered the people of the earth together uh, at the last judgment. And he looks at one group and he says, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And, and people are going to go, wait a second, Jesus. When did we do that? I don't remember giving you any food when you were hungry. I don't remember you giving you something to drink when you were thirsty. I don't remember giving you clothes or visiting you or taking care of you. And Jesus said, when you did it to the least of these... You did it for me. Jesus is saying, I care about those who don't have all the things they need in life. And when you take care of them, it's like taking care of me. Jesus is saying that he identifies so completely with those who are hurting, those who live in want, that when we minister to them, it's like we're ministering to Jesus himself. The voice of Jesus tells us to care for the people who are often overlooked, the people we walk by, the unhoused, the people who suffer mental illnesses. Jesus is telling us to care about them, and as we care for them, it's like we're caring for him. He doesn't tell us to go through and, and, and do all the fine religious pomposity he tells us to love jesus said whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me for whoever wants to save their life will lose it and whoever loses their life for me in the gospel will save it what good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul the voice of jesus tells us what's really important in life and amassing wealth, amassing power, amassing experiences, gathering together all the material needs that we have in life, Jesus says that's not important. The main important thing is that part of eternity that lives inside of you. It's, it, it's your soul. It's your conscience. It's that inner life that you have, that continual dialogue that you have with yourself and making sure that that is in alignment with what God wants for us. There are many, many things out there that are very attractive and that appear to be valuable, but in this, Jesus is telling us what is, what is really valuable, and that is our own souls. So when we listen to the voice of Jesus, we learn to pay attention to what's really important in our lives, and it's not things it's the love of God, and it's the growth within us of our own soul. Now, Jesus could get angry at times. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you lock people out of the kingdom of heaven. You do not go in yourselves, and when others are going in, you stop them. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you cross sea and land to make a single convert, and you make the convert twice as much a child of hell as you are yourselves. Jesus had it hard for religious hypocrites. He embraced the people who are hurting in life. And for those who want to wield religion over other people, who want to exercise their power over other people, who want to be the gateway themselves of people getting into the kingdom of heaven and who sit there and say, who can get in and who can get out? And this is what the godly life looks like and you need to do it this way. Jesus doesn't have a lot of good things to say to them. He calls us instead to have that immediate relationship with God, to talk to him throughout the day, to, to listen to him, and that no other person can stand in the way of us having a direct relationship with Jesus. And those who want to put them there, the voice of Jesus says, don't, don't do that. 
don't listen to the people who are trying to control you. Listen to the people who are calling you to love and to reach out. Jesus said, you've heard it said to love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. You know, when you're on the phone with that nameless stranger who is not helping you do the thing you most desperately need them to do, and you just want to lash out in anger, Jesus tells us to not do that. Jesus tells us to hold it in, to think of other people the way we think of ourselves. Jesus tells us to pray for those who we see as enemies in our lives and not to go around cultivating enemies, but to go around cultivating people that we can love. The voice of Jesus tells us that hatred is not the way. Violence is not the answer. We don't resolve anything by power plays. We resolve things through love. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus comes to us when we're down and out, when we feel like we're at the end of our ropes, when we're soul weary, tired in such a way that sleep can't heal. Jesus comes to us, and Jesus tells us that he is there. He will help us carry our burdens. He will walk through us, with us, through all the trials and turmoils of life. He will laugh when we laugh, and he will cry with us when we shed tears. He will feel our pain, and he will feel our joy. And in Jesus, we can have a complete and whole life. And at the end of the passage we read this morning, that's what he said. I come that you might have abundant life. One of the earlier texts I read, Jesus said, come and follow me. There are all sorts of voices out there. There are all sorts of shepherds you could pay attention to. There are all sorts of people who will be glad to tell you what to do, what to buy, who to vote for, what to listen to, what to read, what to pay attention to, what to think is important, what to dismiss. And Jesus says, listen to me, and I'll tell you, What's important? I'll tell you about love. Finally, Jesus says, a new commandment I give you. The commandment of Jesus is to love. Whenever we hear hear that still, small voice in our heart that is calling us to love, we know then that we're hearing the voice of Jesus and that we are to heed that voice, to listen to that voice, to follow through, to follow Jesus. We call ourselves Christians because we're followers of Jesus the Christ who came to welcome us into the sheepfold, who came to love us, and who came to call us to love one another, to set aside what the other voices are telling us, no matter how urgent it seems at the time, and to listen to his voice. I want to challenge you to pick one of the Gospels, go through and read it, and pay close attention to what the voice of Jesus is telling you. What is Jesus saying? And after that, we begin to learn more and more about what his voice sounds like. And when we do that, we can move away from the words on the page and into bringing it into our lives. And we can get in situations where we're not quite sure what to do, but through the chaos and the jumble, if we've steeped in hearing the voice of Jesus, that voice will come to us and it will lead us through whatever we're facing, taking us closer and closer to a full relationship with God. Jesus offers abundant life. And he says there are people out there that are offering you things that look like that, but they aren't. But listen to my voice. My sheep know my voice. Hear the word of the Lord.
pay attention and come close to Jesus. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Oh Lord Jesus, we do need to hear your voice. There's so many voices out there telling us about what to think is important, what to think is real, what to think is valuable, what we ought to do. We need to hear your voice. And Lord, sometimes the clamor is so loud that we can't hear that soft whisper. Sometimes we need to hear your voice clearly and plainly. We thank you for the words of Scripture where we can read what it is that you said to your followers many, many years ago and know that that's all true for us today. We can hear the comforting messages that you are with us always, even to the end of the age, and that you give us rest when we're weary. We can hear the challenging messages that we need to make priorities in our life for you and for your presence in our lives, and that we need to pay closer attention to your voice. We can hear the hard message of what it means to live a life of love and not a life of violence and anger. O Lord, come to us. May your voice speak to us. May our ears be open to hear it. May our minds be accustomed to what your voice is and not confuse it with the other voices and especially not confuse it with the voices of people who are telling you, telling us that you're something other than what you are telling us that you're an angry God, that you're a vengeful God, that you're a judgmental God. Help us to hear the voice of the one who accepts all people for who they are and calls them to grow closer to him so that they can have abundant life. Help us, O Lord, to hear your voice. And then help us to help others hear your voice. And now hear our voices as we lift up prayers for people we know that are in need of your special touch and of your voice at this time. Lord, we pray for Helen McKee and Vicki Domus, both struggling with breathing pro- problems, that you would bring healing to them. For Don Bradshaw, who's recovering at home after hospitalization for an irregular heartbeat. We pray for those who have recently had Disturbing health problems, prognosis that looks bleak at this time, that you would bring peace and comfort to them, skill to the people providing their treatment. We thank you, Lord, that Harold Sudmeyer had a, another positive good scan that he doesn't have to go back for lab work for another four months for the time that you've given him to be a part of our lives here. We thank you that Kathy DeWolf's sister Camille is now doing well, is driving again, able to take care of herself. We thank you for the last week and the joy of reconnection with friends at our first in-person Presbytery meeting in so many years. We thank you, Lord, for these blue skies and warm days after months of life-giving rain. We thank you, though, for the change for the budding trees and the spring flowers. Certainly, Lord, if those were the things that the psalmist wrote about that brought joy to their heart, they should bring joy to ours as well. All of these things, we come to you knowing that you care We come in gratitude. We come as your children. And so we pray. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come. Thy thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I ask you, what are you going to give to God? Jesus has given so much to us. What are you going to give to God this week? If you'd like to make a financial donation to this church, that would help us 
continue bringing this ministry to you, then we ask that you go on our website. There's a secure portal. You can donate there. Or you can mail checks into the office, however you want to do it. But I also want to ask you to do this. Take time this week to listen to the voice of Jesus. Perhaps go through one of the Gospels and listen and read the words of Jesus and listen to what he's saying. Listen to what he's saying to you. Listen for the voice of Jesus this week. Oh, Lord, our God, we thank you that you have not left us down here alone just to model our way through life, but that you are with us and that you speak to us. You spoke to your followers many years ago and you speak to us today. Take what we give you out of our hearts, our time, our talents, our resources, and I pray that when we give you these things, they would return to us a hundredfold. But most of all, that we would be able to hear your voice as we give ourselves and our hearts to you. Amen. I remember being a kid, being out playing, and then to hear that voice, Murray, come home for dinner. And I knew there would be a hot meal at the table, and I knew that my family would be gathered around me. Jesus calls you, come home. Come home to him. Come home to love. Come home to grace. Come home to forgiveness. And may the love of God fall upon you like a soft summer rain. May the grace of Jesus surround you like the air you breathe. And may the power of the Holy Spirit work in and through you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.